historic city of Kodiak nestles in a bay on an emerald green island. Just as the sea and fishing is her life's blood, Kodiak's harbor and fishing fleet is the hub of her prosperity. Since the founding of the city in 1792, the brass bells in the onion-shaped dome of the church have chimed the Angelus through the passing years. Kodiak, long famous for salmon, can boast of ants, the giant brown bear, giant king crab. Here in its wending streets, the currents of life have carried on in unhurried serenity for nearly two centuries. The oldest mercantile store in Alaska is on the waterfront. At the end of the main street, the new courthouse and post office symbolize the modern era of development and growth. A giant in size, the harvesting and processing of the king crab has grown into a million dollar and the fishery biologists of the Alaska Department of Fish and Game balance their scientific studies of the animal with a fisherman's practical experience and knowledge. Molting generally commences in March. It is also the season for mating and reproduction. The male locks the female firmly with his claws. The king crab does not swim, but walks the ocean floor on legs that sometimes have a span of five feet. Like a knight of old, a king crab is heavily armored. No matter how animated and enthusiastic a king crab may feel inside, his expression always remains the same outside. A female crab carries from 70,000 to 300,000 eggs of pinpoint size under her tail. Crabs hatched from these eggs are so tiny that they begin life much the same as microscopic plankton in the sea. Each year and perhaps When frigid winds howl across the smoking seas, the fleet must sail forth to hunt the king crab in his icy domain. For much of the fishing is done in the dead of winter.
Freezing temperatures, ice, snow, and raging winds are frequently the pitiless enemies of the fishermen. Pot lines stiffen with ice and sometimes snap from the cold. Crabs freeze on deck and the fishermen themselves are forced to employ their skills and energies daily to outwit the relentless elements. The fleet is often forced to lie in harbor for days, waiting for the storm to break before they can sail to the fishing grounds. Windblown spray turns to ice on hull and rigging sometimes causing a vessel to founder and capsize. When the storm winds abate, boats fish around the island in bays that are open to the sea. Trawling is one method used in catching king crabs. A trawl works like a giant scoop as it is dragged across the ocean floor. When full, it is lifted aboard the vessel and the crabs are dumped into the hold. Fishery regulations require that all inshore fishing in the Kodiak Island area be done with crab pots. A fair day dawns and fishermen head for the fishing grounds in Alatak Bay over a billowing sea. The sea is dotted with bobbing buoys of various colors. These mark the position of the crab pots that rest in the bottom of the bay in depths ranging from 10 to 130 fathoms. Most of the boats average about 36 feet in length. The captain locates it and swings his vessel to take it aboard. Men working the aft deck hook the buoy or pot marks the crab pot as a tack line. About six and a half feet. The covering is woven of stainless steel wire. Crabs of legal size, six and a half inches across the body, cannot escape through the mesh. Legal sized crabs are tossed into a saltwater tank, which is built into the hold of the vessel. Some of the pots are square. Each trap represents an outlay of approximately $100. Lines and buoys are kept in tip-top condition to prevent losing them during fishing operations. Bullheads, sole, flounder, cod, perch, and salmon heads are used for bait. These are stuffed in bags to be hung in the trap with pieces of fish. When baited, the trap is thrown overboard to catch more crab. The captain steers on to pick up the next pot boy. Loaded with the day's catch, the Susie Q enters Lazy Bay to discharge her king crab. Moored in the bay are other crab fishing vessels, cannery tenders, and the freezing ship, Deep Sea. Other crab boats are approaching a tender. It will transport their catches to a cannery located at Kodiak.
The catch of this crab boat has been kept alive in a wire cage hung alongside the vessel while awaiting the tender's arrival. Crew members are eager to unload. They're anxious to get back to fishing during the period of good weather, for the size of their paycheck is determined by the number of crabs caught. The tank on the tender is aerated by a constant flow of pumped seawater. It will hold 6,500 crabs. Females and undersized males are returned to the sea alive. When the weather is good, sleep is a scarce article with the crab fishermen. Loading completed, the captain signals the engineer for full speed ahead for the 18-hour run through wintry seas to the cannery.
frozen crab meat in the shell has found wide favor on the American market. After cooking, the legs are washed and polished and placed on portable racks. Rubber bands bind the crab's legs close to the body. The loaded rack is rolled into the freezing room. The legs and bodies are now dipped in preparation for a quick freeze. Owing to the great length of the legs and the size of the body, product represents a colorful array of labels for the market. Canned, packaged, frozen legs, and whole king crab. King crab is shipped from Kodiak in refrigerated deck units aboard steamships. This long-legged benefactor of Neptune's kingdom that has brought better times to their city. The next stage in annual craft will come from near and far by foot, automobile, boat, or plane to participate in the gay festivities in Alaska's oldest city. There are the traditional frayed straw holiday hats, exotic shirts, king crab sandwiches, tasty king crabs, and hot dogs. Crab boats give free boat rides around the harbor. Children give shy, appealing smiles. The most spectacular event of the festival is the parachute jump, staged by a young local boy who loves excitement.
these sky veterans are spectacular too. Ah, for a better look. The parachutist maneuvers his chute in vain to miss the water, for he knows he cannot swim. He lands in the water, but is quickly rescued by his interested audience. Local skin diet king crab. Some are captured to be used in the king crab shelling contest. Surely no commercial crab enterprise could make a profit on the methods used by these novices. However, the eye contest is to win. So apparently all is fair in war and crab shelling. And oils go to the fastest shakers. At the coronation ball, the festival queen receives a crown made of a large king crab shell, ornately decorated with legs and claws. The festival draws to a close with a banquet in which local chefs have vied with one another to produce the most delectable and original king crab dishes. The official tasters, ah, this is an assignment we like, sample the dishes and award the prizes to King Crab Chefs of the Year. The feasting begins with the whole town and many visitors participating. Sizzling casseroles, Epicurean Newbergs, delicious salads, all made with generous chunks of rich, tender king crab meat with a delicate texture all its own. As the feast goes merrily on, the fishing fleet is being readied for sea. In the gray dawn, the boats will voyage down to the sea with their intrepid crews to fish for king crab. They that go down to the sea in ships, these see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. The greatest wonder to the fisherman is the giant king crab, monarch of the ocean floor, which has given a delectable and wholesome food to our 50 states and a rainbow of promise to Kodiak.